Please hold while I confirm your passcode. Thank you. Your passcode is confirmed. All guests have been muted. You can unmute your line by pressing star six. When you hear the tone, you will be the fourth person to join the meeting. All right, you're good to go. All right, you're good. Great, thank you. Um, go ahead and get started here. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone uh, for joining today. And uh, if you can hear me okay, please uh, give me a green check mark. Okay, at least I've got a couple there, so I'm sure others are starting to figure out the check marks. Um, so I want to go ahead and get started. So thank you all for uh, joining. My name is uh, Todd Lohr. Uh, I'm on the board of the ABPMP International. Um, there's been a bit of a change today. Dan Morris was originally set uh, to present um, our, our kickoff webinar around our CBOC release uh, that just was launched uh, early this month. Um, unfortunately, Dan is not feeling well, so he's on the line and will be able to answer some questions. But for the most of the discussion, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take kind of a lead role walking you through um, the, the concepts. Before, before we get started um, in today's webinar, uh, more specifically focused around really the, the launch of our version 3 of our ABPMP central body of knowledge. I wanted to quick give a, a bit of a background on some of the things that are happening within ABPMP and, and some of the basis for this webinar. Um, as part of our, our strategy around ABPMP, um, apart from kind of the, the local chapter presence that we have internationally, uh, we're starting to look at how do we start creating more of a virtual chapter strategy. So as part of that virtual chapter strategy, you're going to see more and more communications in the coming weeks and months around um, several initiatives that we at the board are taking to uh, provide more of an online community for our members. Um, one of those is the webinars themselves. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, this is the first webinar in our webinar series, and I'll get more into the webinar series uh, that we're launching in a, in a minute, but also to that virtual chapter strategy. Stay tuned. Um, we're going to have a lot more uh, content pushed out on our web and increase our web presence. Uh, we're looking at, at creating some social collaboration in, in, the, in addition to some of the, the things that you can collaborate on in our LinkedIn site, um, creating something within our, our members area of our, of our website um, for social collaboration, uh, following topics, sharing content and files, um, linking into you know past presentations. So there's going to be a lot more uh, coming in the next months around that. And then start doing maybe some virtual meetings as well. So we plan to make an announcement later uh, in Q4 around some of the virtual meetings that we uh, want to kick off around certain topics uh, and then open it up to more of a virtual meeting forum um, globally for, for all of our, our, our members. Um, so, so as I said, part of that strategy obviously is really providing a webinar series uh, to our constituents. So. Um, this is the first webinar in that series. Uh, we're planning on doing two to three a month, um, typically on the Wednesdays of um, the first, second, and third Wednesday of each month. Uh, we're going to have a couple of different um, uh, series within that webinar. So the first being the, the CBOC. Uh, so today is, is really the, the launch of that. Um, we also plan on doing a CBOC by chapter review over the next several months as well. So stay tuned for those announcements where we'll really walk through um, in a lot of detail. Today's session is really going to be more just an overview of the, the common body of knowledge, um, where we are in the process, how we got there, um, a little bit of overview of each of the chapters, what it includes, um, and some of the content. Um, additionally, though, the, the actual detail uh, by each of those chapters will be presented by a combination of the authors and, and other thought leaders in each of those areas um, over the coming months. So stay tuned. That, those will be great sessions to be able to hear more from the actual authors themselves and exchange and dialogue around the content um, of the CBOC and, and really a great learning opportunity for our, our professionals. <clears throat> um, in addition to the, the Common Body of Knowledge webinar series, we're also going to host a number of webinars um, coming up around technology trends, so being able to hear from some of our uh, technology partners on some of the things that they're seeing in the market, some of the new tools and uh, technologies that they're developing around business process management 
Um, we're also going to have a session on Ask an Expert where we'll hear from uh, some of our service providers and analyst professionals on trends and, and things that they're seeing in the market that are impacting BPM professionals. And lastly, we're going to have a series on uh, what we're calling BPM in action. So it's really case studies of some leading organizations and how they're deploying uh, BPM efforts within their organization um, in a number of different use cases. So some really good stuff coming um, out um, this fall and, and into 2014, so very excited. Um, to go ahead and launch that. So without further ado, uh, I will go into, I guess, the, the content uh, we have today. Um, based upon the, the number of folks that we have on, I think we're going to go ahead and try and do questions at the end. Um, so at the end, I'll open it up, um, and you can answer uh, either through the chat um, or by raising your hand. We'll figure out how we can do some of the questions toward the end. So um, I shouldn't need the full hour to get through all of the material. Uh, but go ahead and if you can please wait to the end to ask some of those questions. Um, <clears throat> so with that, we'll go right into uh, the, the ABPM PC bot. Um, so again, we're, we're very excited um, to, to have you here to, to announce and, and the official launch of the version 3 CBOC. Uh, came out earlier this month. Uh, hopefully many of you have already seen um, the new version, and um, maybe some of you have actually already been able to uh, download and take a look at the new version. Uh, give me a, a check mark if you've had a chance to get the new version or have taken a look at it. Okay, so it looks like a few of you have already taken a look at it. So good. Um, very, very much recommend um, members to go ahead and, and download it and take a look at it. Um, we're, we're excited to be able to uh, launch it here. Um, Giving, giving a little bit of the background here on slide two, um, you know the the version two uh, of the CBOC, and again the CBOC came out many years ago uh, as version one, version one, and then version two was the most recent version. Um, you know, a couple years ago, folks started recognizing that you know obviously the BPM industry is very dynamic. Um, I think we all agree that the concepts have con have continued to evolve over the last decade plus. Um, and continue to evolve. I think if you look at the CBOC as it stands now, um, there is a constant evolution, and we're actually already in, in discussions on what does that version 4 look like, and how do we continually um, update this as the, as the technology and as uh, practices and methods and, and adoption rates change in the market. But um, with that, a committee was formed in late 2011 to look at how we could really create a new version of the CBOC. Um, one thing to note is that the version 3 that we have recently released is not just an update of version 2, um, it's really a rewrite. We asked uh, a lot of the authors and a lot of the folks that reviewed and provided inputs to the CBOC to take a step back um, and, and obviously leverage content that was there previously, but really take a look at how we could um, expand on some of those theories and concepts as they've continued to evolve in the market. Um, what came out of that was actually um, a doubling in the content. There's now uh, twice as much content um, if you stack up. It, it was interesting. We had our in our international board meeting over the weekend uh, this week and <clears throat> had the actual printed copies in front of us of the version 2 version versus version 3. And version 3 is quite a bit more substantial uh, as far as the, the content and the thought um, that, that went into it. So we're really excited about the, uh, the version 3. Um, so it's taken a bit of time for us to be able to pull this together. Um, so for the last two years, we've had a lot of discussions, a lot of checks on completeness um, and versioning, editing, et cetera, around version 3. Um, we've also had quite a few people that, that we see as leaders in their field, and, and we'll get into that in the next few slides, some of the folks that had feedback here. Um, you know, we're also you know, interested in hearing what practitioners think as well, um, and, and obviously there's no you know, set set ways to, to describe some concepts of BPM, uh, but as much as possible, we try to lay out kind of the most consensus-driven view of some of the, the, the methodologies and practices that we're seeing within the field. Um, so the CBOC version 3 itself uh, is, is a fairly comprehensive uh, document uh, regarding a, a lot of the different 
concepts around BPM. So for folks that are, are BPM professionals and practitioners and, and have been in the space for some time, you know that that acronym BPM really can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. So uh, within the CVOC, we've tried to take a, a holistic view of all the different concepts or constructs that could be applied to business process, you know, process excellence and, and, and the like, and have that as a different structured way of the different concepts um, within each of the chapters. Um, topics range everything from process modeling um, through the process performance and concepts around redesign and transformations, um, and you know, all in, even into technology. So uh, business process analysis suites versus business process um, management suites or the BPMSs um, and, and kind of all the topics in between. Um, the, the CBOC is not meant necessarily to be read um, from front to back, cover to cover. Um, I suppose you could. I'm not sure how fun that would be for anyone or if you'd want to even try that. But it's really meant to be um, kind of a collection of the information around the different uh, topics and really kind of as a reference guide around some of the, the current thinking in the marketplace. Um, one other thing is to, to denote since the kind of the two major offerings from the ABPMP is, is both the CBOC as well as uh, the Certified Business Process Professional, the CBPP. Um, just want to note that the CBPP and the CBOC are separate. So the CBOC is not necessarily necessary to be the study guide for the CBPP. Uh, that is a separate designation around collective experience um, as a process professional, although some of the concepts and you know con constructs around the exam for the CBPP would be um, documented within the CBOC itself. So quickly, I'll go through the um, collaborative effort. And this was really a great effort across the industry. A um, lot of different folks representing a lot of different organizations, um, analyst communities, Gartner, Forrester were heavily involved, uh, a lot of service providers from leading consulting organizations um, that, that are leading their respective practices in these areas were involved, uh, and a lot of practitioners uh, that, that are day-to-day -day, um, doing work within the field of business process management um, were, defi were used to, to not only capture the content and author uh, the original versions of several of these, these chapters, as well as um, <clears throat> there were a number of industry experts that were used as reviewers to provide either introductions to those chapters as well as review of the chapters and making sure that the, the, constructs, the concepts were in alignment with current thinking. Um, there was a extensive extensive chapter review committee where a lot of the concepts were discussed um, and vetted uh, amongst different folks. And then a lot of different people spent some time um, reviewing the, the CBOC from an end-to-end -end perspective, um, just making sure that, that a lot of the concepts were at least um, included within the, the, the CBOC. Um, so again, very proud as an organization on the number of people um, that we were able to bring in, not only in the authoring efforts, but as well as the, the review, um, representing some of the, the leading thinking in the area of BPM. Uh, we consider this one of the more um, <coughs> comprehensive uh, um, documents in the field today as far as the, the current thinking on BPM, um, and including a lot of different context, contact areas. Um, so with that, I'll go into the actual um, CBOC structure itself. Again, so for folks that are familiar with the previous versions of the CBOC, um, similar alignment of the chapter. Some of these have been uh, revised and updated slightly. Uh, it's, it's spread out over 10 different chapters. There is uh, an overview up front. Um, chapter 1 is really kind of giving an introduction of how the CBOC was graded in the structure. Chapter 2 focuses more broadly on concepts around business process management. Um, and then chapters 3 through 10 get into some of the detail around some of the different spaces that you typically see within BPM. Uh, chapter 3 focusing on process modeling. Chapter 4 looking at process analysis. Chapter 5 looking at process design. Uh, chapter 6 on process performance management. Uh, 7 looking at process transformation. Chapter 8, looking at process organizations. Chapter 9, enterprise process management. Um, and Chapter 10, BPM technologies. Um, one thing to note, there is in, in some way some overlap between some of these chapters. They, some of these concepts don't stand on their own. Um, you know, some thought was 
in how do we kind of restructure these. There were a lot of discussions that took place as this was developed on what section some of this content belongs in versus others. Um, so you know, a lot of these concepts are really within a, a structured way. You can't really do enterprise process management without process organization. Um, both of those really said define some of the underpinning for a process transformation in Chapter 7. So as much as possible as we were editing and pulling the concepts, we really tried to make sure that there was consistency in the concepts throughout the chapters, uh, as well as being able to reference some of the other chapters for where you can find more information on some of the constructs. So with that, I'll walk through um, real briefly each of the chapters, some of the key points um, on the right you'll see um, the chapter guide, um, so the actual um, inter the actual different sections that are written um, in each of the chapters. Uh, like I said, chapter one is, is really just an overview of the CBOC um, and all the different things that it contains, how it was written, who it was written by, um, who those industry folks were. Um, <clears throat> also a reference uh, to the glossary uh, to gain an understanding uh, of the different terms and definitions included within the CBOC. Chapter two um, really goes into a number of the definitions and, and kind of what the concepts and constructs are uh, today around the, con the, the concept of business process management. So again, um, you know, one of the key points here is BPM continues to have a very wide variety of definitions and approach very differently um, within different organizations. So examples, you know, BPM in some organizations mean a, a process-centric ownership construct where you're tying your strategy to end-to-end -end processes and governing those. Um, in other organizations, it's your Lean Six Sigma program. It's really how you define your continuous improvement and processes. And even in other organizations, it can be a technology concept uh, where they're deploying workflow automation through BPMS uh, platforms. So um, really a lot of different overarching concepts. So chapter two really lays out a lot of those concepts, um, how they fit together. Um, we at ABPMP recognize that there you know, are different approaches to each of the situations and, and that one, no one definition necessarily is, is right or wrong, but really there's a lot of different concepts together around the overarching uh, community of practice for business process management. Um, what we have tried to do, however, is get that core set of concepts and techniques and approaches that we're typically seeing in organizations today around processes. Um, this chapter provides a bit of a framework around those concepts and, and a foundation um, to talk about you know, kind of all the different pieces of business process management and what we're seeing in the industry today. Chapter three focuses more on process modeling. Um, so again, core concept here, most projects regarded to, regarding BPM um, and the change of a process have in some way, whether you're, you're doing process redesign, process reengineering, Lean Six Sigma, you know, BPMS, workflow automation, you know, a lot of your different components, really the core to that in a lot of ways is capturing that process and documenting it within a defined construct. Um, process modeling is really that construct. Um, uh, so, so the chapter here really lays out a lot of the concepts that we see within um, process modeling. So some of the, the, the purposes of process modeling, um, a lot of the notations that we typically see uh, across the industries, across different tool providers uh, for process modeling. Um, it's kind of a, a process model leveling construct as well. So a very common taxonomy that you see you know, in process uh, functional or end-to-end -end decompositions of level one, two, three, four, five, what those levels are, typically some of the naming conventions you see, um, including approaches to process modeling, so bottoms up versus top down modeling approaches, um, some of the things that you would actually capture for those processes, the use of frameworks and reference models, um, and then also getting it a little bit into modeling uh, from a modeling techniques, tools, and, and simulation, although some of that also falls within our analysis chapter as well. Chapter four looks at, at process analysis uh, very broadly. So again, covers um, concepts around why organizations are looking to do process analysis, uh, what the value is, what, what we define process analysis as, um, and some of the leading uh, concepts on um, how you do process analysis, the different roles uh, associated to doing process analysis, 
um, how you gather the information, documenting concepts for analysis, different considerations and key concepts uh, for how you actually would do process analysis. Chapter 5 looks more from the analysis to process design. So really looking at two levels of change, both process at a, at a high level, more strategic, uh, versus the more tactical or workflow process design. Uh, so it's looking really at how do you look at your current state analysis and, how, and holistically how do you change and optimize those processes. Uh, it looks at project goals and, and realistic uh, change enablers and the limitations, um, how to build and optimize process design, workflow modeling, um, and beyond simula uh, simulation and, and application development, um, as well as BPMS approaches uh, and how BPMS is, is being used to not only design but execute on those processes. Chapter 6 um, looks kind of at the, and, and if you notice from a progression standpoint, the chapters are really around a BPM life cycle from strategy to execution um, and, and kind of a design, implement, execute, monitor, um, similar constructs. So chapter six, kind of going within that progression, looks at overall process performance management um, and, and really into two different major sections. The first section um, is, is looking at foundation for how you measure um, your processes. The second looks at the application of performance measurement approaches um, in the business and in business redesign. Um, so walking through concepts like what is process performance management? How do you actually do process performance measurement? What does that tell you? Um, as well as monitoring and controlling, um, how you look at key process performance definitions, what to measure, voice of the process, uh, future state simulation, and, and other concepts here. Chapter 7 um, and 8, 9, 10 start looking at more um, across the board foundational concepts, one being process transformation. Um, one of the things that we see in the space is BPM is, is coming becoming less of a, a concept just to do BPM, but really as an enabling concept for large-scale enterprise transformation. Um, so looking at your processes and your core business and ways to transform that across the board. Um, so within Chapter 7, the process transformation, um, there's a couple different concepts here. Um, you know, from an improvement and transformation perspective, the different objectives of transformation. Um, <clears throat> talks a little bit about getting ready for process transformation, how you sustain the organization, some of the change management, some of those critical pieces to really do a large-scale process transformation um, in, in an organization. Chapter 8 um, is focusing more on the process organization. Um, so looking at process-driven organizations and hierarchical structures. So it's really the shift that we're seeing in organizations um, to having not just a functional view of the organization and how they hold folks accountable uh, to drive results, but really a matrix view as well of having more end-to-end -end ownership, um, looking at <coughs> hierarchical structures and process-driven organizations, uh, the different process management roles and governing bodies that we typically see, uh, and a lot of the constructs around the process organization. Chapter 9 it looks at a, the holistic framework around really enterprise process management. So how do you manage um, processes across an enterprise? So looking at you know, operational maturity and the different maturity models um, that are in the market today that, that organizations use to assess their, their current maturity as well as assess you know, the frameworks and the roadmaps for how they um, can, can become more mature. Um, from a process perspective. Um, so there's, there's concepts around the current state and doing your process maturity, um, overall process enablement and governance constructs, um, again, overlaying with some of the constructs in Chapter 8 around process ownership. Um, there's concepts around the business process management roadmap, so how do you put together um, a capability analysis of the different components that make a strong process organization, assess the maturity of those, and then structure a roadmap for how you're going to drive those uh, in the organization. Um, uh, and then also another leading concept that you see in a lot of organizations is the Business Process Management Center of Excellence. So a lot of the constructs that we see typically around the BPM COEs, um, how they're being formulated and, and what are they doing in today's organizations.
The last uh, chapter uh, is really around VPN technologies. So looking at a number of different concepts in, in the technologies themselves. Um, so VPMS technologies, um, some of the, the speed of change, um, how they're being used to generate applications and serving as workflow integration, interface and data exchanges, uh, the work in simulation and simulation and iteration. Uh, so a lot of the overview of a lot of the BPM technologies um, from a BPMS perspective um, that we see in the marketplace today. So I know I went quickly through the chapters. Um, today's purpose was not necessarily to get into a lot of the detail, but really to provide an overview of each of the chapters and some of the concepts um, within those chapters. And then um, you know, hopefully get some, some interest for everyone to take a look at some of the concepts out there. Um, what we'll have in the next several months is detailed uh, reviews of each of these chapters where you'll be able to learn uh, quite a bit more from the authors themselves or other leaders in the industry around a lot of the concepts here and get into a lot more detail. Um, a couple notes on the CBOC and certification. Um, just as I mentioned above uh, or previously in the, in, the, in the discussion, the CBOC and the CBPP are independent of each other. Uh, the CBOC is really meant to help practitioners understand what should be considered some of the approaches, methodologies, and executing BPM and BPMS supported projects. Um, so really just kind of that um, reference um, manual. The CBP, on the other end, is a test to determine a practitioner's mastery of everything um, encountered in performing a BPMS or BPM or BPMS supported project. Um, so while practitioners should be familiar with the CBOX contents, um, the CBPP is, is not based solely on the CBOC, uh, just from, a, uh, from, from that construct. So just fully understanding all of the concepts within the CBOC doesn't necessarily uh, map you know, one to one to the CBPP exam. Um, following this webinar, we suggest um, if you're not already a member, uh, you join a BPMP to receive your member's copy. Uh, or you can also, if you're not a member, you can go to our website and purchase the, the new version of the ABPMP CBOC uh, version 3. Um, and again, also, um, you know, if you, if you are not a member, we strongly consider um, you looking at membership not only to get that version of the CBOC and, and future updates that we're planning, but is also to take advantage of a lot of the upcoming uh, webinars and uh, social collaboration tools and other things that we're, we're launching within the, the next several months as part of the ABPMP. Uh, so with that, um, I know we, we covered this pretty quickly, so um, wanted to go ahead and see from the chat if there are any specific questions. Um, so if you want to go ahead and type in, I don't see in the chat log that there's specifically any questions at this point. But go ahead and um, go ahead and type those in, and we'll take a few questions. So while we're waiting, I think for a couple questions. Okay, here's a question. Um, do you have an endorsed education provider program of some sort? Uh, th that is an excellent question. Um, that topic is being worked on right now. Um, and within, I would say, the next couple months, there will be um, an education provider program um, launched. Stay tuned for that uh, from our web. Uh, there will be, um, we will start hosting kind of a, a registered training partner um, section on our website where you'll be able to find by region or country, location, um, and by different topic areas some of the uh, training providers uh, that ABPMP is, is working with. So yes, that, that although not out there today, um, that will be coming uh, very shortly. Good question. Thank you. Um, yes, so the next question was, can we get the PowerPoint? Um, I will confirm that the PowerPoint will be available um, on our website, uh, but the recording of this will be available on the website as well uh, for members to go in and replay at any time. So we will also try to get the PowerPoint itself uh, included in there as well. I think a few more questions are coming in.
what can I do to get recertified? Okay, uh, another good question on the recertification process for the CVPP. Um, that process is also being finalized uh, to continue certification. Um, if you're currently a CVPP, uh, just hold tight. Uh, you have not expired. We are putting together the certification process as we speak. Uh, so again, uh, by hopefully the end of this uh, fiscal year, uh, you will see um, you will see a certification policy announced uh, to get, continue to get your recertification um, and how you go through that process and submit your recertification. Um, how much has the exam changed? I don't believe that. Um, I know that we continue to look at new questions um, and rotate some of the questions, um, kind of in an a um, kind of continuous basis. So as some of the concepts change, uh, the exam change questions themselves, we're looking at updating those. Um, so there will be changes. I don't think um, it hasn't been completely rewritten, but there are uh, continue, continuous changes to the exam questions. Um, one question here on identification of the process. Not really sure I follow the question, um, and since I didn't write the chapter, um, on depending on what chapter that is, I guess I would defer you to join that webinar on that specific uh, chapter. Um, I, I don't have kind of the background on all of the chapters. Um, again, another certification question. Yes, so if you are a CVPP, there is a recertification process that everyone will have to go through, and that's going to be communicated to uh, current CVP um, practitioners uh, in the near future and how they have to recertify. Um, Dan, here's a question on the effort to translate into Spanish. Um, I know there's a couple different translation efforts underway. I'll have to give that to you. OK, thank you. Um, I probably should should start with a, a little bit of a background as to what's what's going on right now. Uh, today we have the certification test translated into several languages. Um, we recognize that there's there's now a need to to make sure that uh, a that the, the testing process is consistent across all of the geographies. The uh, questions are consistent across all of the geographies. So we cover um, not only the things that have been covered, which questions are still valid, but because the uh, marketplace has changed, we recognize that some of the techniques have changed. Certainly, the, uh, the tools have changed, and you know those types of things. So we're starting. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we're, we're, in fact, um, I'm going to be leading a, a, essentially a program to to look at expanding the, uh, the current uh, CVPP testing process and standardizing it around the world. So, um, yeah, that's kind of a, a long-winded background is, is to say that we're, we're really looking at this and focusing on it. There is a separate committee dealing with recertification. They've been working on uh, what we're going to do, how we're going to go about doing that. Um, with about 1,000 people who have been certified, roughly a third of them uh, coming due for recertification, it's, it's going to be a, a fairly big job to, to look at um, you know, that process to make sure that people have, uh, first of all, understood the recertification requirements then secondly, complied with them. So the committee is looking at how that's going to happen. Um, and so there will be, as, as Todd said, over the next couple of months, you should be seeing a series of emails coming out on how that process can be done and done in a manageable way. Uh, we can't design a process that's halfway reasonable to do that. We probably shouldn't be doing what we're doing. So. <coughs> Excuse me. That's why Todd took over for me today. As I have some type of a bug, but um, as far as specific languages are concerned, moving forward, um, 
as we we start to consolidate, we start to bring all of the different versions and ways of, of doing this together. We'll be, we know we'll have a Portuguese version. We know we'll have a Spanish version at that point. The people in our, our affiliates in uh, Europe will be putting together German and we believe French versions. Uh, there'll wind up being um, a couple different versions for different parts of the world. People are talking about an Arabic version as an example. So uh, all the, the, we'll say a list of the different languages hasn't been completely compiled yet, but we're looking into that based on uh, the anticipated, first of all, the history, and then secondly, the anticipated volume of uh, people looking to take a test in a given language. I'll turn it back to you, Ted. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Um, so it looks like uh, there's been several other questions, uh, a lot of them around the certification process itself, um, and a few questions here on uh, the procedure for submitting application and taking the exam. If you go to the website, a lot of the procedures, there's you know really a lot of content around um, the procedures for how, how you submit your application and how you actually take the exam as far as setting up a testing center. A lot of guidance there. So I'll defer to our website on the specifics of that. And it looks like we have some folks. Um, Dan, who would folks contact regarding um, assisting in translating uh, the this, CBOC this to other languages? Um, I would, would probably say going forward from this point on, uh, I would be the initial point of contact. And uh, from that, um, it would go to a committee that's being formed right now. Okay. So I can okay. coordinate. Yeah, so Dan, you can get Dan's contact information from um, the website as well as one of the, the VPs. OK, any other questions? <coughs> all right, well. Um, I think you all know why Dan wasn't able to present, so hopefully I did, did his content a, a little bit of justice. But again, um, today's session was really just to be a pretty brief um, introduction um, and, and really to announce a lot of the excitement and a lot of the content coming forward. Um, so again, want to thank everyone for your participation uh, and for the questions and uh, the dialogue here. Um, it sounds like we need to have, um, I'll, I'll take back to, to the certification group, um, maybe a, a similar webinar on uh, kind of where we are and a report out on the certification process itself, um, kind of uh, the development of the test as well as the recertification process. So um, sounds like that might be another um, good piece for us to cover as a webinar, um, specifically with all the questions around the certification. So kind of an overview on certification and what it is and, and how to get certified as well as the recertification process. So I'll go ahead and follow up with uh, uh, the, the, the person that's leading our certification uh, process for us for ABPMP, and we'll get that webinar scheduled as well. So um, you know, please stay tuned uh, to look for that. Um, also stay tuned for um, additional um, webinar announcements. We have another webinar coming out uh, very shortly that you'll see the invite for, as, as well as several more for October and into November as well. Um, on the topics we mentioned earlier, as well as getting into a lot more detail around each of the chapters to, to have more dialogue around the different components of the CBOX. So, um, with that, I will um, give you all back a few minutes of your day.